By show of hands, how many here today own or have owned cryptocurrency? How many of you know how it actually works? <laughs> now, how many here today know and use Google? Big difference. What if Google never existed in our lives? What if we chose as a, as a society not to accept Google into our lives? There's over four billion users worldwide is what started as a simple search engine. We average three to four searches a day. What if we actually never had that technology? The rate at which human beings learn and educate and achieve and innovate would be crippled. It's hard to believe that Larry Page and Sergey Brin at one point actually had to sell this technology. They needed their thousandth or one hundredth or even very first user. Think about that. So what I think the problem may be is that very few of us are early adopters of technology, even though the bigger risk may be in waiting. Good concept to have. Now, I'm not here today to tell you about cryptocurrency or what's going to race up a thousand percent or uh, after recent news, what's going to go bankrupt, right? <laughs> I'm not here to tell you where to buy it or what it even operates or how it even operates, rather how important it is to be an early adopter of the innovation in our lives. That smartphone that's in your pocket or purse, could you have learned it a little earlier? Probably. But the question was, was it worth the wait? So my intro to cryptocurrency was much like everybody else in this room, even as a 20-year vet in the financial planning and investment management business. I just didn't understand it. It had no real world use case for me to understand. It was more of a novel, shiny investment, just kind of dripped with risk, right? I do remember the first time that I had to speak out publicly on it though. A friend of mine hosted me on his podcast and he said, Tim, right at the end of it, Tim caught me off guard, of course. Tim, how can you explain Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in one sentence? And I said, it's a toxic investment, plan on losing your money. And I answered just like that, without any thought. It was easier for me to dismiss something that was foreign, that I didn't understand, rather than take the time, learn, educate myself, and make a good decision, right? So years later, I attended a tech conference in Arizona, and the speaker, step here, the speaker was obviously well, uh, well prepared with his information, gave us a past performance on Bitcoin and was very, very confident about something that he referred to as digital assets. But that's not what drew me in. What drew me in was his passion for it, his zeal for this thing. And I knew that I had to get educated about it. So I turned to Google, right? Did a history on Bitcoin, learned about something called a blockchain, right? I opened a few wallets, funded them, lost money, right, of course. I even tried my hand at an NFT with a college buddy of mine, Slugbone. <laughs> Don't even ask why that thing exists, but it's technically out there, it's on OpenSea. Uh, it's quite tragic, right? <laughs> but what's the point of all of this? The whole point is to be courageous, right? Have the courage to open a wallet and fund it. Read a white paper on Bitcoin or cryptocurrency and build a Slugbone. Think about this. What if the world operated on a digital currency rather than the US dollar, like Bitcoin? We still use the fiat currency for ourselves, we still use it as our disposal, but a digital currency that the world is united under, not tethered to a centralized banking institution. What if you were your own cryptocurrency, each one of you, getting paid for the information that you give off every second of every day? your shopping habits, your food preferences, driving patterns. Think about that. All the while getting paid in the cryptocurrency of your own main. What if we never needed identification ever again? No usernames and passwords, no driver's license, no passports. Interesting. With smartphone technology, and online banking and e-commerce and social media, we're more interconnected now than we've ever been in our entire lives. Cryptocurrency is a part of that. It employs us now, today. 
We have smart contract writers, Bitcoin miners, investment fund managers. Companies are spending record amounts of money on research, trying to develop a real world use case for us that we can have. Kevin O'Leary, the famed Shark Tank investor, right? He stated that in the near future, that digital assets and cryptocurrency will be the 12th sector of the S&P 500. And I believe him. So I asked you earlier to be courageous. How do you do that? Become an early investor or an early adopter? According to Roger's theory on the diffusion of innovation, we all live somewhere on a continuum in one of these silos here. Innovator, early adopter, early majority, late majority, or laggard. Now, the innovators, they are the risk takers and the evangelists. They love the feeling that something new brings them, that exclusivity that they get and they hold onto that tight. The internet started right there. Now the next phase, the early adopters where I reside, we're bigger in number, and we bring momentum and influence behind us. We're loud. We just like to talk about those things. And we start to push forward. It's oftentimes that the first followers of a leader are the most critical for the innovation success, Bitcoin in this case, or cryptocurrency in this case. Right now there's a range, five to 10% of the world, they have either owned or own cryptocurrency, placing us right there in that position. Now, the big swell right there, the early adopters, the 34%, that first part, they need to see this move from risk to ease of use. They don't want much disruption in their lives. They understand it. They're trying to make it mainstream. They give credibility to that innovation. They let the world know that we're no longer beanie babies, that we're no longer a fad or a trend. We've moved on to something else. In the case of cryptocurrency, it's no longer this speculative investment. Rather, it's a useful case that we can all have. Next, the late majority. Love this. They rush to it at the embarrassment of missing out, being left behind. They want to join. They just needed somebody to go first. The fear of missing out, the infamous FOMO. Interestingly enough, this is your most loyal group Right now, cryptocurrencies is mainstream. We have it everywhere. It's on our smartphones. It's in our pockets somewhere. Good luck changing them to something else, right? Now, honestly, my favorite are the laggards. I love them. We've all been laggards at some point in our lives with something, technology, whatever it may or may not be, but we've all can place ourselves maybe there. They are not drawn to technology. They are dragged to it, kicking and screaming the entire way. In fact, I have a coworker who places herself firmly in this. But that's not what they actually need. What they need is a complete and detailed understanding of what this thing is. They want to control it and own it, right? In the case of cryptocurrencies and all of these other spaces, Web3 and blockchain, we have a long way to go. But I think we're further down the continuum than we may think. I think we're jutting ourselves up against that early majority right now, companies are spending, according to Statista, by the end of this year, $11 billion. And in two years, that will almost reach, hopefully it does, $20 billion. So I challenge you that you found yourself on this continuum, you've placed yourself in one of those silos and you push yourself up towards that early adopter phase, not just crypto, but in everything and beyond those things. Move from this to this. Thank you.